a little bit about this particular program. Uh, recently, I had a member, as you all know, I don't too much uh, unless he comes in and, and goes ahead and gives his own shout out. Um, I had a member that I was doing a one-on-one -on -one consultation with and uh, we were talking about the NACA program and the NACA program uh, uh, several, it was a while back, me and my wife, we had attended uh, this particular, um, one of their particular meetings <laughs> And what they do is they have these. Once again, as you all go ahead and come in, can you, can you please click the like button? Um, what they do is they have uh, these local seminars, these local meetings talking about this particular program. And NACA is pretty much catered towards people who don't make a lot of money, don't have huge incomes, but still have a desire to go ahead and purchase property still have a desire to go ahead and purchase property and it's actually uh, this is not my first time attending uh, different types of buying seminars one of the things I think I'm gonna do is uh, especially here in the Georgia area is to investigate a lot of potential buying programs and beautification things to go ahead and give you all so that you all can go ahead and take advantage of a lot of these things um, yes, as homeowners, uh, but at the same time, many of these programs will allow you to go ahead and buy, uh, income property as long as you go ahead, you live in the property. And so today I want to talk about how to live rent, how to live rent or mortgage free. Okay. How to live rent or mortgage free. And so with this particular program, guys, uh, it will allow you uh, to go ahead and buy property. They don't place emphasis so much on credit. Okay, They don't place emphasis so much on credit. I need you all to understand that because with traditional lending, there's credit involved. Okay? There are strict guidelines when it comes to credit. With this particular program, they want to see that you're employed consistently for 12 months. Um, they want to see that you have been paying your bills. Uh, they want to see that you've been paying your rent on time, okay? And so I would say to go ahead and really kind of start this process would take one year, one year of uh, paying your bills on time, one year of employment consistently. And so as they were explaining the program, and I began to think to myself, wow, that's a great concept. I can go ahead and let real estate investors know. So what you all could do, because they went ahead and they said it at this particular seminar, was this. Um, you all can go ahead and purchase uh, income property as long as you use it as a primary residence. So you have to live in the property. So this is the deal. Many of you live in areas where these types of four unit apartment complexes will present phenomenal opportunities. Okay? What you want to do is, number one, before you enter into. So let's say, for instance, let's fast forward a little bit. Let's say, for instance, you go ahead and you go through the NACA program. And as you're going through the program, you're investigating properties to go ahead and move on. Many of you live in areas where you can get positive cash flow from a lot of these properties. So what you do is this. You have to be an investigator before you're an investor. Being a first time investor or homeowner, what you need to do is focus on properties that don't need a lot of fix up. All right. Number one. Number two. Uh, see what the properties are renting for. So let me give you an example. Let me give you a. So let's say, for instance, you find a four unit apartment complex that's selling for one hundred and fifty thousand okay? dollars. It can be one hundred seventy thousand dollars. Doesn't matter. One hundred fifty thousand dollars is just an easy number to work with. Now, in areas like New York or California, obviously, this is not going to work. You know, it, 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 it can work. But for this explanation here. Um, you want to target areas where you can 
achieve something called a break, break even or a positive cash flow. Charlotte, North Carolina, Texas, Alabama. Um, we're talking uh, South Carolina. A lot of parts of the South, Mississippi. There's a lot of you that live in these areas. Ohio, a lot of you live in these areas. And so with this NACA program, it will allow you to go ahead and buy these properties um, based upon not credit, but character. Not your credit, but character. As you all go ahead and come in, can you please click the like button? Um, so they're looking at, do you pay your bills on time? That's one of the reasons they're going to go ahead and, and pull up. That's one of the reasons they want bank statements. That's one of the reasons they want um, to pull up your credit is to see that if you've been paying on time, not that you got this ridiculous amount of all this other crap going on. They just want to see what type of person, what type of habits do you have? Because if you can show that you've been paying your rent on time and these bills on time, then yes, you can go ahead and pay this, this particular property as well. So what you do is this. You're looking for something that presents a positive cash flow. So how do you know that? What you want to do is you can look at sites like Craigslist, Zillow, contact two or three local management companies, even two or three local real estate agents to see, let's say for like, like a unit, let's say you get an address of a property, one, two, three Main Street. What are units renting for in this particular area, right? What are units renting for in this particular area? So let's take the case of a $150,000 property, okay? Um, let's say a... The mortgage on something like that is, let's say it's a thousand dollars a month. Let's also assume that each unit that you're moving uh, that that rents in that complex, in that four unit apartment complex, let's assume each unit rents for, let's say seven hundred dollars a month. Just an easy number to work with. My head it could be six fifty a month. So let's just use seven hundred dollars a month, right? So 700 plus 700 plus 700, that's $2,100 a month. Jamal, let me go ahead and get back to that. Um, he's talking about a question of re regarding uh, flipping expireds. Um, so getting back to the NACA, the, NAP, the NACA example, let's assume you have an apartment complex, each unit rents for 700, 700, 700. That's $2,100 a month. Now, remember, your monthly mortgage payment on a $150,000 four unit apartment complex is $1,000 a month. Okay. So, $1,000 minus $2,100, that's $1,100 left over. What are you going to do with that? You're going to have fix up costs. Things are going to break. Okay. Things are going to, you, you may need um, landscaping done, which is going to be an expense. You're going to need trash to be taken out or whatever that is. That's going to be an expense. What you want to do guys, when you're moving on an apartment complex, you want to make sure number one, I was just telling this gentleman, number one, you want to make sure that it's individually metered. What do I mean by that? You want to make sure that there are some apartment complexes that come as a cluster. In other words, when you pay a particular bill, there is an apartment manager that will pay. They'll pay once one lump sum of a bill. Uh, it could be. Um, so let's say, for instance, it's a, a, a water and electric bill, right? You want to make sure that each meter is attached to each individual unit so that everybody pays their own bills. There are some apartment complexes out there that are cluster metered. Lots of times these are the, your larger apartment complexes. And so the larger apartment complex, the management company will go ahead and pay X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z amount of whatever they think the average per use per unit is they'll go ahead and they'll pay the electric company or the water company, what have you. Um, you don't want that. 
Okay, you want to make sure that each unit is individually metered. When you go ahead, you check out these properties, make sure because you want everyone paying their own bills. You don't want the added expense. You can, as time goes on, as you move on larger units, uh, this, you can go ahead and pay one lump sum bill uh, to the whatever utility company. But just starting out, what you want to do is make sure that everyone pays their own water, trash, etc. Sometimes in some areas, you can't get away from that. But I would say try to make that. Try to make that uh, of importance, you know, to where everyone is paying their own bills. OK, so let's assume out of that eleven hundred dollar cash flow, that eleven hundred dollar um, positive cash flow. Let's assume there is a portion of that. I'm going to say, let's say $300, let's say three or $400 every month where you're going to be paying different expenses, whether that be, um, maintenance, whether that be fix up, whether that be something going wrong, screens being torn, paint job, et cetera, et cetera. Let's say $300 a month. Let's say 400 a month. Okay. So four hundred a month minus eleven hundred dollars a month of that positive cash flow, that's seven hundred dollars a month. Okay, you're gonna have your own personal expenses as well. So it said, let's say that's another two hundred. So that extra five hundred dollars a month, that is your positive cash flow cushion. That is yours, but don't spend it. Don't spend it all. You can go ahead and do a little something here and there. What I want you to do is take that small $500. I want you to place that into a, an account. That's a just in case situation, just in case something happens. Okay. But looking at the big picture, guys, when you buy a $150,000 property, right? And each unit rents for 700, 700, 700, and they're all two bedroom, one bath units, and you live in the other unit. Now you're, you're living in a property where you're living either rent or mortgage. You're not paying rent. You're not paying. It's your tenants are paying it. Now you can focus on this thing called real estate investing. Right. Because 